Um, <clears throat> I'm going to talk about e-research services and capabilities, which is some work we've been doing within a favor working group um, uh, for a project called Advancing the Professionalism of our e-research e workforce. Um, so I'll just switch. Oh, there we go. There we go. Um, this is what I'm going to talk about. It's largely based on a talk, a birds of a feather session we ran last week at eResearch Australasia, but with the updates from the feedback from that session and with the next steps where we're going to take it after this and the imp <coughs> input we want from you and the community. So first, just to recap, the, those that have not seen this before, we'll talk about favour, We'll talk a bit about the context, the e-research value proposition and chain that forms the basis of our, our work. Uh, then we'll, more description about the services and capabilities themselves, mainly the services, and then talk about the next steps, the capabilities, uh, processes and infrastructure. So first, for those that don't know, Favour is Federation for the Advancement of Victorian e-research. Um, it's a uh, collaboration of eight Victorian-based universities, and it's there to um, promote collaboration around e-research initiatives, services, and infrastructure. There are currently three projects. Um, access to infrastructure, uh, how best to engage with digital humanities uh, research, and they ran a great um, showcase the week before last. And this project about professionalization of the e-research workforce. Um, so this, this work, this project started because we did some previous work uh, at e-research. Oh, uh, there we go. I'll talk about the working group. The aim of the working group is, um, with the long name, is to create or to clarify the roles within the e-research workforce. Now, recently I've been talking about the e-research professional workforce, but but as David has just shown us, that there's an awful lot of volunteers that do this work as well. So you should consider that the e-research, the professionals and the, the volunteers and researchers who actually provide e-research services. So the idea was to clarify the scope and categorization of these roles, to list roles and position descriptions and career paths. But that has evolved because we've, we're looking at a we've come to a different understanding after doing some initial work. So we started off, um, this builds on some work we've done modeling roles for e-research, where we ran a BOF at either 2018 and I presented on it. This is where we took almost 200 roles and we categorized them by six broad services. Very, this was a highly subjective uh, work, we just said you categorize this role title by the primary service. Um, and those services were all de specifically or may tech technology independent. So they were supposed to be very broad idea of a e research service. Um, so the first question though was categorizing those roles over whether they were e research or not. So this is the, the graph that came out of it on the left of the knots. And on the right are the, the, the role titles, which are the blue nodes categorized into groups and then in, under each of the, the services, which are the yellow nodes, the six services. So this was useful because it showed that there, those common themes were the purple nodes, that there was commonality and groupings. But what it turned out is it made it clear that it was very subjective and there was no one-to-one -one correspondence of roles to services. And that meant that really the skill sets were split. So each role had combinations or, or parts of roles from different services. So we decided to take a different approach for this project. And we, rather than going bottom up from the roles, we decided to come top down from the services. So the, the reasoning being that, as you see, services uh, are like an interface delivered uh, to the researchers. So, but services are delivered through capabilities you need uh, and skill sets form part of those capabilities. And that's the ongoing discussion within the, the group and 
the start of which was to clarify, uh, broaden those descriptions uh, of services uh, um, at the last week's buff. So why, why again, just to talk about the, the context behind that, we use a really brief version, definition or description of e-research. So what is it? It's the application of advanced computing and ICT across the research life cycle. And there's a value proposition for the workshop it's effectively to help researchers uh, through various ways. The more important thing is what, what does a service, how does a service uh, get delivered? So the value chain, it's about the outputs that you deliver to researchers. Uh, so it's by, where I said e-research professionals, the e-research workforce, in fact, it's about transforming inputs into those outputs that make up the service. And that's done through capabilities. And then capabilities can be built up from people processes and infrastructure required to deliver those services and by people people we don't mean in with specific individuals we mean the skills that they use to execute the processes and use, you know, work on the infrastructure so that's the basis so what we were looking at in our project was six main services and these are the the, the six of the labels that we use you advise train and promote uh, develop, deploy, and support. So there's, there's no technology, they're not technology specific. And you'll note the top three are more about engagement with researchers and the bottom three are more about working with the technology. So I'll go through them briefly just to show, because we've already shown them in the, in the BOF, but I'll show what the additional information that we've added are based on the feedback. So if we look at advice, it's to provide advice on various aspects, solutions, approaches, principles, um, to support different aspects of the research data life cycle, like data life cycle, computation, and grants and ethics applications. But it's also to triage referral of inquiries to other service units. So the red bit there was what the feedback we got that we need to consider also across all these different parts of the research life cycle. So the second service is train, obviously one of the larger ones, develop, organize, deliver training for researchers across various levels of expertise. And you see on various aspects, technical uh, processes and technologies, equipment, platforms. And the additional things that the feedback came back with is also identifying that skills transfer is a, is a way of training through resource provision, interactive research projects, or through, as we saw this morning, uh, about getting researchers um, into active technical projects as well. So you second them or give them, um, yeah, to get them in and transfer over uh, technical skills. The other thing was also referral to external training materials and opportunities. So that was train the next Engagement type one is promote, it's about promote available technologies to services to, and services to researchers through various ways, but also to promote policies that impact research technologies and the research, e-research activities. So those are the three engagement ones. On the develop side, provide advice about development, support development of scripts and software by researchers within projects, develop research technology and referral to third party software development services. And the feedback we also was about developing bespoke workflows and pipelines within projects. So not just software, it's developing other things, other artifacts. So on the deploy service, the only extra focus we got was to could also remember it's about infrastructure as well as t technologies and systems, but deploying infrastructure and, uh, and various technologies. And this could include commercial off the shelf units. It's things you've not necessarily built yourself. Uh, provide ongoing maintenance and support deploy, bespoke deployment of technology to platforms. And the final service is to support support key research infrastructure technologies, applications and platforms, and 
The additional one was to provide access and manage allocations for technical research infrastructure. So those are the six services that, um, and the uh, refinements and the additions that we came up from the, the bird of a feather session. So what we want to do now is start to look at the capabilities. Obviously we want to get to the skill sets, but how do we get to the skill sets? Um, what we wanted to do is first look, well, let's look at a way of identifying the capabilities and then identify the associated skill sets with those capabilities. So what is a capability? Really it's an expression of what the business does or can do. So it's what the, how it gets that service delivery. And it can be the people, processes and infrastructure required to transform the inputs to into activities, into outputs within the activities upon which the service delivery depends. So again, the people through their skills, the processes and the infrastructure. So as an example, <coughs> example of three from training. So training planning, um, would be a capability. And the main thing about these are split because they have distinct people processes and or skills processes and the infrastructure. So for instance, planning would include, could include requirement solicitation, solution identification, but requirements, it could be a process surveying. How do you find out from researchers what training is required? Uh, organization would be about program design, session planning. You might have an expression of interest uh, process and you might then need uh, something like event price to actually plan the sessions. And finally, delivering training obviously requires different uh, processes and infrastructure and whether it's online, whether it's um, in person, less so these days or whether it's, yeah whether it's virtual. <clears throat> so each of those would have different processes and infrastructure and skill sets associated. So really what we're looking for from that is to focus on the processes and infrastructure first uh, to identify those capabilities. So the next steps, we are asking that question. What are the processes and infrastructure that support the delivery of those services? Uh, we're going to look at that ourselves, but we're also asking for your input. So we're inviting you to look at the, um, a Google form where it lays out all those definitions and descriptions as context. And then for each uh, service, we ask three questions. What are the processes involved in delivering this service? What is the infrastructure involved? And other comments about the service. Have we missed something? Do you think that there's other, other ways, um, other things that we've missed as aspects of that service? So then, so that's what we're asking from the community. Um, there's the project page. So if you want to actually uh, go and find out more information, we will update it as we make progress or you can contact me directly as the project lead project champion um, and yeah so please go in and fill out um, your thoughts on that survey so that's all I'd like to say at the moment if you have any questions